Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in today's video we are going to cover the neurophysiological explanation of the M5 motor response in Glasgow Coma Scale. So whenever in a head injury patient we do not find the M6 motor response that is the patient fails to obey the commands then the physiotherapist next checks for the M5 motor response which is localization of the painful stimuli. Now the most common way of checking the M5 motor response is to give a deep painful stimuli using the knuckles over the sternal bone. In response to this painful stimuli, the patient is able to localize the site of pain and can even remove that stimulus of the therapist using the hand. Now presence of this M5 motor response provides the therapist lot of valuable information that can be used to further assess and treat such head injury patients. So now let's try and understand what actually happens in the background right from the giving of the painful stimulus to the production of the localization to pain response. So the painful stimulus that is provided by the therapist, the information is carried by the pain pathway on the contralateral side of the spinal cord from where it starts ascending up through the lateral spinothalamic tract and then reaches to the ventroposterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus. Now the student should note here that once the information reaches the thalamus, the brain is able to perceive a painful stimulus. But brain still doesn't know that the stimulus is originating from which particular part of the body. Now this information that has reached up to the level of the thalamus is then carried further up via the thalamocortical projections and then it reaches finally to the parietal cortex at the level of the primary sensory area. The painful stimuli now is further processed and analyzed and now finally for the very first time the brain is able to appreciate and localize the exact site of that painful stimulus. Now the processed information from the parietal cortex is then carried to the primary motor area that is in the frontal cortex through the association fibers. And it is at this level that this sensory information gets converted into a meaningful motor response and now the brain thinks of how to overcome itself from this particular painful stimuli. So now the primary motor area sends descending motor impulses to the region of the spinal cord which will be responsible for production of the motor response. So that means if the painful stimuli has been given at the level of the sternum and the patient brings the right hand to remove that painful stimulus. So this motor response has been brought about by the descending motor impulses that have reached up to the level of the cervical spine and have fired the target anterior horn cells and thereby through the motor nerves have stimulated or fired the muscles that were involved in the production of the response. So this is how we can interpret the neurophysiology of the M5 motor response in which we have actually checked the different components and their functions. So now a physiotherapist can interpret that this patient is having an intact pain pathway. The thalamus is functioning normally. Thalamocortical projections are also intact. The primary sensory and the motor areas are also functioning normally. That is the parietal and the frontal cortex are also intact. And then next the pyramidal tract which carries the motor impulses is also functioning normally. And so is the spinal cord and the lower motor neuron. Therefore, we can say and easily comment that such patients who demonstrate M5 motor response belongs to the mild head injury category and they will soon recover their full consciousness and have good prognosis. These are again the series of lecture which I usually take for my postgraduate students and I am sharing it with you all. In my next video, I will be covering the neurophysiological interpretation for the M4 motor response where the patient fails to localize the painful stimulus and demonstrates withdrawal to pain. 
So see you all in our next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.